what's a sociopath, what's a psychopath. And I said, the, neither of them understands feelings and emotions. Neither of them cares about other humans or dogs or kittens the way normal. And normal is, is not a bad word. Normal is a thing. It's just a, a statistical term. The majority of the population feels. The difference between psychopathy and sociopathy is that both of them want to wear your head as a hat. <laughs> but a sociopath will do it in the privacy of their own home and a psychopath will do it walking down the street. Yeah, wow. That's that's a really succinct. <laughs> that's a really succinct. So just to go a little bit deeper, because there's a common saying, maybe not now, but I remember a few years ago, where a lot of them said that a lot of prominent and successful CEOs have sociopathic tendencies, but most of them are not psychopathic. Would that be accurate overall? Generally speaking, they could be both. Like I don't limit them. They could they could be both. But uh, surgeons often have, and now also, by the way, sociopathy and psycho psychopathy are kind of blended together and used interchangeably, which is fine because the the difference clinically and the difference behaviorally is not really that big. Like either way, they just. It's not that they don't care about other humans, it's that they can't. They don't understand it. They, it's just that sociopaths are kind of better at faking it. Uh, one of my children is a sociopath, arguably, also, or autistic, both. She's been diagnosed with autism, but she doesn't understand how other people feel. And so if something surprises her, she laughs. Even if the surprise is like one of my other kids, I have four kids, it's too many, but one of my other kids had a pet rodent i don't remember whether it was a gerbil or a hamster or a little guy but it died and it kind of came as a surprise for all of us like it seemed fine one night and the next morning it was not and my youngest who is adopted from a trauma background and so there is a ptsd element there as well which so that sense of sociopathy is self-protective and i get that but she laughed and she wasn't laughing at my son's pain, it was a surprise thing it, it, more than anything. And the older they get, the better they're able to sort of mask and act like other people. So in order to be a CEO, but more so in order to be a, a surgeon, for instance, um, sometimes in order to be a psychologist, you have to distance yourself from the humanity of these people. You have to, you, to be a judge, to be a corrections officer, all of these sort of positions where you are making literal life and death decisions about somebody else's life and in existence. And you have to divorce yourself from emotions, at least at work, but often it just sort of becomes a way of being in the world. And so, which comes first? I don't know. I, like nature versus nurture is a is a moot point for me. It's an argument I refuse to get in because it doesn't matter. I, I'm much more focused on, okay, here's where they are now. So I don't know if they start off unable to feel emotions and find jobs that work for them or if they find jobs that work for them and learn to remove the emotion from it. But either way, if you're doing things, making decisions, you know, cutting into someone's brain, that kind of thing. You have to forget that this is a mother or, uh, you know, a podcaster or whatever it is that they are, because if you get too emotionally invested, you'll make yourself, I don't want you to be anxious. I, I just had spinal surgery in August of last year, and I don't want my neurosurgeon thinking about my humanity. I don't want him to get anxious and I don't want him to shake. I want him to just do the thing as though I am a mannequin on a slab. Thank you for discovering more with us this week. If you enjoyed watching this video, check out the full length episode at one of the windows that pops up. And as always, see you again in next week's train of Discover More. Thank you for tuning in.